I'm Chris Bell, physiotherapist for the Western Bulldogs. I'm here today on behalf of the Victorian Amateur Football Association and Lifecare. We're going to be running through some taping techniques and some injury prevention tips. Hope you enjoy. A really common sporting injury is a corky or a contusion, which is a direct trauma to a soft tissue injury, causing bleeding and bruising around that area of soft tissue. The management that we do in the AFL and certainly in elite sport is to try and keep the athlete functional in terms of their symptoms. So if their symptoms are too severe that their functions jeopardise, we have to look at removing the player from play. If they are able to continue with their sport and their functional ability is not too much jeopardised, we try and continue to manage their symptoms. For this to happen, we have to make sure that we try and acutely compress the area of contusion or cork to make sure that we limit the bleeding as much as we can. To do that, what we do is we use some leuco foam to basically help compress the direct area and also to add a little bit of a buffer and a protective zone of comfort. Okay, the leuco foam has basically a, a adhesive layer on the back part of the foam and it's also quite a soft foam. So we typically use two layers of this foam. The idea of the foam is it allows us to localize our area of compression whilst also adding a little bit of a protective area for the, for the position of a corky. If we say that the area of corky is on the lateral part of this quad, all we do is we find the area of tenderness from the corky by palpation, and we place a customised pad over that area of corky. We then reinforce with a second padding, like so, literally over the same contact point of the area. Then we get the athlete to come into a quarter squat position, and we reinforce the padding and we add some compression by a terrible tape. Starting on the bottom part of the thigh, they're in the quarter squat position to make sure the muscle's tensed. If there's muscles not tensed and you add this compressive quality to the tape, what happens is it squeezes too much on the quadricep muscle and will feel too tight. If the muscle's contracted when you're applying the tape, it should be very comfortable for the athlete once they stand up. So, the tape's applied very lightly to the back part of the thigh around the hamstring, but then you increase your compression as you come across the pad. You overlap your tape by about half the tape width. Once again, increasing your compression on the lateral part of the thigh where the quad cork is, continuing all the way up to the thigh. You can then reinforce that tape by once again coming back down the thigh, focusing that compression on the outside part of the thigh. So there we have really effective compression over the area of contusion, plus a little bit of an area of padding to try and help them with any further hits that might occur around that area. Straighten up for me. We then lock that tape off because the adhesion isn't ridiculously strong, so we need a little bit of a hand from the rigid tape. We then lock that off with rigid tape. And it is at this point we then test the athlete's function. Now it's important that you don't let these athletes sit down and rest for too long. You try and maintain an active recovery in the acute phases of a game situation. That can be done in the form of a bike or some generally slow running. If they're too incapacitated by their injury and you rule them out, make sure you apply ice, compression, rest and elevation immediately. Make sure you avoid massage to the area which can increase bleeding and also avoid any oral anti-inflammatories which can also increase the bleeding. It's also important in the days following that you continue the RISA principles. And it's important that you try and aim towards an active, somewhat of an active recovery three to four days post injury, be it a bike or once again resumption of slow jogging with some generalised stretching to try and mobilise the area of contusion.